In this episode, I'm delighted to introduce you to my friend Maureen York. Now, Maureen's an expert in helping people who find they've somehow lost themselves in life and want to rediscover their spark and who they really are. Now, in our chat, we covered some deep stuff, which I think has something for everyone. Uh, we looked at how we can lose ourselves in the labels of life and what it takes to shake free of those attachments. We looked at why we get so attached to our labels and the things that we think they give us. We also looked at what are the subtle and not so subtle blocks that make us afraid to let them go. And we explore the hidden cost of staying lost and how to find the courage to let go. Plus, we explore why you don't have to undertake this journey alone. Now, as ever, you can find the show notes and all the links mentioned in this interview at www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 134. Maureen is such a beautiful soul who's been on this journey herself and is committed to helping you find yourself again. So stay with me and let's dive into it. Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. If you're looking to improve your life, to heal, to grow and mature as an individual, but maybe you found that some of the personal development and consciousness stuff has given you the impression that you need to be super serious and vigilant to get anywhere meaningful or feeling like maybe you're just not up to snuff. Well, this show is here to remind you of your humanity and in fact that that's where your true joy and brilliance lies. With over 25 years of experience in the transformation biz and having developed MPA, one of the world's simplest pressure-free approaches to growth and well-being, if I do say so myself, I'll be sharing tips, steps and insights that'll help you navigate all the aspects of life as a growth-seeking being. On this show, it comes to you with a good dose of humour, maybe a smattering of colourful language, a reminder not to take things so personally, and most importantly, to be kind to yourself along the way. Make sure you hit that follow button, and let's get into it. Hello, Maureen. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me today, Jill. It's a pleasure to be here. It's really good. Now, you're all the way over in Spain. I don't know if you know yeah. this, but I lived in Spain for six months myself. So, oh, um, I didn't know that. I did, yeah, down in, in Motril, um, that way down. Whereabouts in Spain are you? I'm uh, inland from Alicante, about 45, 50 minutes inland. So I, I've oh, got yeah. lovely hills and greenery around me, and, and my plot, plot of land is just covered in olive trees. Nice. And you've been building a swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that happened last year. It took longer than expected. But yeah, it's now fully functional, as are the seating areas and the other bits and pieces that we were, we were building. So we're, we're getting there. Fantastic. I'm going to read your bio out. Because <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I think in your bio, there's things that are going to jump us off into our conversation today. Um, looking at your website and you've got, um, I know you've got a new website up, uh, launching your VIP month with Maureen, um, which has some amazing testimonials in it. It's got, um, I think it really gets to the heart. I mean, I'm, you, you're the people you really love to help are kind of 40 plus women, um, who were lost and want to find themselves. I'm pre, <laughs> I'm pre doing the, the bio here. But when I read it, I thought, wow, that's Maureen so clear on um, how she helps people. And we're going to dive into it. But let me read your little bio. <laughs> so Maureen, hello, Maureen. Maureen York, you're a transformational coach, mentor, speaker, and retreat leader. So Maureen works with women uh, in the summer of their lives, 40 plus. So I'm going to commentate on your, I love that, summer of their lives. Wonderful way to say it. We've arrived at a point where they have unwittingly lost themselves by default or design or by design. She helps them unwrap and remove the layers of labels they've picked up and clung to over the years, whether it's job title, mother, wife, those kind of things, uh, which has turned them into a shell of who they truly, truly are. Maureen guides them to unpack their authenticity, boldness, love that word, and courage, allowing magic to happen. And where they rise up again and 
unapologetically claim their lives back so that they can thrive again. There's a lot to talk about in there that I think is going to be really helpful to to a lot of my listeners. Um, I love the idea of the labels. Um, that's very key to in in non personal awareness. We we do a lot of work with labels um, and those approaches. So I'm going to dive into that with you. And then authenticity is a fantastic topic. Um, but I'm going to guess there's a story behind you arriving <laughs> at the point where you're helping people in this way. So how did you end up being in Spain? And you know, tell us a bit about your story, Maureen. Okay, so back back in July 2007, I went on a weekend event about raw food, and I came away. There was only three people attended. So I came away with a, a notion of setting up a business. And the original business was going to be running raw food retreats in Sicily, not Spain, but Sicily. And over the years, the, the dream, the desire, the goal has kind of ebbed and flowed. And I had, a, I had this brilliant image in my head of the uh, property that we were going to buy. It was going to be an old farmhouse. It was going to have all my olives. It had, oh, it, I could have described it in, in minute detail. It's not the property that we've currently bought. However, so over the years, over the intervening kind of 12 years or so, um, we looked at hundreds of properties, but none of them matched the image in my head. And then one day, um, I was speaking at a conference just about an hour up the road from here, actually. And it was the, I had cancer in 2017 and everything's okay. Thank you very much. But a year after my treatment finished, I was speaking at this conference. And at the end of the conference, uh, I was asked to facilitate a closing session people to, for them to express their biggest insights or aha moments from the event. What was their biggest takeaway? And I sat at the front of the room and there was nothing happening between my ears. I'm thinking, I've got to say something. <laughs> I'm sat at the front. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to be the idea person. Nothing, nothing. And then out of nowhere, I, I, out of my mouth, it came and I'm just glad to be alive. Then I broke down in tears. It didn't last very long and I don't do public crying very often. Um, but that was the catalyst for me to actually take the action. So I, I got home. This was November 2018. By December that year, our UK house was on the market. We hadn't found anywhere to move to. We hadn't even settled on a country at this point. But the house was on the market. And I'd, it was almost like I was showing the universe, I'm serious about this now. You've got to show me something now. So. Uh, February 2019, my husband found this property on the market and he went, we've got to go and look at this, but we couldn't actually go and look at it until May. Um, and there's a whole kind of craziness that happened about three or four days beforehand where somebody else made an offer and I'm thinking, ah, I'm going to lose it, I'm going to lose it, but we didn't and it was fine. We didn't move in here until December 19. Um because our UK house took a long time to sell. But that's why I'm here, is because I finally made the commitment to, to the universe, to the world, to anybody that was listening, that I'm serious about this. Mm. And, yeah, that's why I'm here with me, my husband, and two crazy parrots. So from the raw food thing, then that inspires you with a vision. You end up moving to Spain in the end. Mm. So how does that relate to working with women who feel lost that's well, the story i want to hear okay the story <laughs> i, I want to know what how 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 that there's a rep when i read the stuff on your website and we know each other anyway it's like there's there's a maureen that's been to that lost place yeah and has so, done this amazing leap that's a that's a transition of mega proportions, which is what obviously you help people do now. It, it is. Tell us about that. So, 
So obviously from 20, 2007 to 2019, it's a fairly chunk, chunky piece of time. Um, but I had worked for the University of Oxford, this small little institution in the UK, um, for almost 25 years by the time I left. And I got so fixated, so caught up in the label of the job title, mm. the label of the, it, it means I'm important. It means something about me um, that I actually lost who I was. And I forgot that there's a human being here. I'm not just the, the, the job title or the, or the label or the, the thing that sits on, the, on, on my, my door label type thing. I am a, I'm, a, I'm, a, an, I'm an amazing human being here, but I'd lost sight of that, and I could see it happening to all the my colleagues. I could see it happening to everybody that I came in contact with. The students were getting caught up in the well. I'm a PhD student at Oxford, therefore it means something. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not. It's not who you are. It's not your identity. It's just a label. It's just a, a, a mask, if you want to put it in those types of terms. So I got lost behind the mask of the job title. And I was so fixated on the job title and, and the, the position that I thought I held in this institution. I actually had four leaving dues because I was, it was, like, I was like still clinging on to this thing that I thought I Made, meant something to me and we've been here now in Spain for two and a half years and at Oxford feels like a lifetime ago it feels like forever ago because I've dropped the need for the job title I've dropped the need for any outside connection to mean something about me and I think that's where people get lost and confused and they they get fixated by who they think they are and yeah that's that's the backstory is i lost myself and it's only in the unraveling and in the uncovering of me that i could see how so many other people around me whether it's ex colleagues whether it's People, even the expats around me, they they they're still caught up in the. But I'm I used to. If you talk to people, they'll say, "Oh, and I used to be an ex." And I'm thinking, I don't want to know who you used to be or who you thought you used to be. I'd like to know who you are now. And connecting with the real person in front of me. So it's it happens all over the place. Whether you're a man, you're a woman, or not, it, it's irre irrelevant. I mean, the fact that I I point myself towards working with women is 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 just a uh, a default position. But it's more about how how do you truly find who you are behind the mask, behind the charade, behind the the label? That's who I'm trying to speak to. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. I say in, in MPA and non-personal awareness, we look at the idea of labels a lot and identity a lot and how those labels can become identities. And then the, the making something an identity has tremendous power to direct your beliefs, your emotions, your behaviors, all sorts of things. So one of the things I imagine you encounter with uh, potential clients and just people that you encounter like the expats is I and see what you think about this but it seems to me that a lot of people who are lost into those labels don't actually know that they're lost but I imagine there's also kind of um, in your experience kind of symptoms that can help people wake up to the fact that oh I'm actually lost and away from my true self because i'm caught up in a label can you speak to that yeah a bit? I, I can do there was i was actually listening to a, a youtube video this morning it was an interview um and this guy came out with this phrase i hadn't heard before and it's you can't read the label from inside the jar <laughs> love it and i thought oh i've got to use that 
Um, and and it, and it's about when you're when you're immersed in the the fixation of labels, masks, or that version of you that think that that version of you that you think is real. Until you step outside of it, you're never going to see that that's what's what's caught caught you out. Um, so part of my job is getting people outside of their own jar and seeing what's actually going on. And it tends to happen for women when they get to 40 plus. They, they've got the, the job, the car, the, the marriage or the, the partnership. They've got children if they want children. They've got all the things, the tick boxes of life that they think they wanted that would mean something, that would mean they'd made it. And they go, and that's not it. There's something missing. Mm -hmm. And it's in that realization that there's something more. There's something they want, something more. There, there's a need for something more. That's when they tend to knock on my door and go, can you help? Um, currently working with a wonderful lady. She's got a very high position in uh, close to government. Uh, she's got her two children. She's she's in that. She's she's got she's got the house. She's living in a a, a very affluent area in the UK. And her her first question to me was, "More I've lost myself. Can you help me find me?" And it's in that in that scenario that you think, okay. Let's let's get back to basics. Let's see what what life has thrown at you. She's not the job title. She's not the mother. She she is a mother, but she's not the mother. If you see what I mean, the mother isn't her identity. It's just part of who she is. Um, and she, she just lost herself. She couldn't she couldn't see the wood for the trees. Basically, I imagine um, this has been my experience that. When someone in that position, again, a woman with those labels, again, I've seen it with men too, as you say, with the same thing, that they've got all the tick boxes. Mm. And they've got this sense of wanting something more. Um, often I'll, I'll see that there's a, there's, a, there's a sort of kickback of self-judgment around that that can come in. And a sense of like, well, okay, I've got everything. My life's perfectly good. Who am I to have a problem? And then kind of, um, what the hell is this? Is that is that what you find? Very much so. And and I think the higher up in status that they think that they are, the 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 bigger the fall that they the that they perceive they're about to have. There's this. There's almost like. Um, it's a bit like somebody standing on the edge of a precipice and going, but I want what's down there. How the hell do I get down there without falling and breaking every bone in my body? <laughs> you know, it, it's that, how, how do I do this in a way that I still am okay with life? And it's in it's in the offering them the safety net to to allow them to gently almost like float down on the cloud to get to where they they want to get to to get to to unravel or to uncover what I call your inner diamond that inner space within you that you thought you'd lost forever and all it was done you just covered it up with a load of thinking yeah. But it's it, it's it, it, you're right. It happens for men. It happens for women. It happens for everybody, probably on the planet, because at some point you realise that all the bits and pieces that you'd acquired over the years meant absolutely nothing, unless you find who you are. So in the, in the process of it, so I'm I'm sort of stepping into my listener's shoes, who's probably asking themselves, well, how the hell do I do that? Obviously. Get in touch with Maureen because she's an expert in this field. Um, and you can, I haven't mentioned the show notes, I probably will in the introduction that I do after this, but go to uh, com slash, oh, what's the number this time? 134 
um and also we'll give out your urls but it's more in york.com is the first port of call and we'll talk about the vip thing later but yeah um so obviously talk to maureen <laughs> but but let's let's give the listeners some insight into what what's entails what, what does that journey entail also so, before you answer that question because yeah, i imagine yeah. the, the biggest thing is like that's a scary proposition as you say it's like i'm going to jump off this cliff and you're going to say well i'm going to sort of just let you float down it's like yeah right <laughs> <laughs> okay Talk us through it. okay so i like I, here, here's my analogy it used to be peeling away the layers of an onion, and I thought, that's not very sexy, is it? <laughs> um, not really. So my latest kind of metaphor as to how I describe how I work with people is, you know the children's game, Pass the Parcel, that they play at, at children's parties? Yes. And when the music's playing, this package with the amazing gift in the middle that's been layered and layered and layered with wrapping paper gets passed around every child. And when the music stops, the person with the package is allowed to take away one layer of the, the wrapping paper. So I liken it to that, except that you're the only player. Mm. You're the key player in all of this. Your inner diamond is in the middle of this wrapping. But to go to, to rip off all the wrapping all at once would be like running naked through the streets. It, it would be too much of a shock to the system. So what I do is I help people take away one layer of wrapping paper at a time to find the next version of themselves, which is lay, un, laying underneath. Mm. And we do that slowly and, sh- and surely and steadily so that there's not too much of a shock to the system. They get accustomed and acclimatized and comfortable with the next version of who they are and the next, and when they're ready we'll go and we'll take another layer off but it's done on a on a very individual basis it's very bespoke basis because uh it depends on who shows up in front of me it depends on their background the scenario that they bring in that, that they share with me and but essentially that's what's going on we're, we're just taking off one layer of wrapping paper until we find the hidden diamond that's in the middle. I, I love that. It's, it's so dear to my heart, the, the basic underlying principle of the gentleness of pacing. In, in my history and training and working with a sort of number of processes where there's sort of this emphasis on, you know, forcing the breakthrough, you know, and I've seen people bust a fuse. Um, under those conditions to me that's the most unhelpful unkind approach uh which doesn't honor the individual pacing in the mpa mastery course where we do the practitioners training pacing is at the heart of it and it is an individual thing um to to meet someone in their pacing to me is is sustainable change the sort of force thing means that you often you might get a big breakthrough but then it collapses because you haven't got the the body underneath it and but you also haven't built the grounding to uh, allow you to move on to the next next layer down um, it's about taking off one layer and getting comfortable with that layer being okay with what shows up then you can go to the next layer down if you if you just go straight to the heart of of, of the of the of the package the, 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 and, and and rip out the diamond you're you're gonna have have yourself a whole heap of trouble, yeah. Because because the 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 mind, the body, and the individual can't take take it in all at once. So this forcing, as you were talking about, the forcing of the uh, of the uh, solution never really works. Which is yeah. why I mean I I I there's the VIP month program, but I also work with people on a weekly basis over a six or a 12 month period as well, depending on how fast or slow they want to take the process. But it's still a, gen- a gentle uncovering. There's no ripping off the bandage, shall we say. Yeah, I, I think that's that's just so important, really. And one of the things you say, like in your bio on, on your thing is, because we've talked about like looking over the edge, <laughs> there's that free fall, which is, ends up with you splatting on the bottom literally you know 
Um, all the labels are gone, but you're in pieces and broken. <laughs> There's the oh. diamond. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the sort of gentle come down. But even when there's sort of that wonderful level of reassurance that the pacing's going to be right, that there's going to be a gentle, natural unfolding, still it's a scary prospect. And you talk about you help people find the courage to, to take that leap. Again, even if the leap is into your gentle hand, <laughs> to just help them down bit by bit. Yeah. So t- talk about the, the courage and how what you do, advise people to sort of find, how do people find the courage to do that? So, so this is about looking within courage, boldness, authenticity, resilience. They're all, they're all inbuilt statuses or, or traits or um, parts of parts of each and every human being. It, it, we tend only to, to step into our boldness or our courage or our, our level of resilience in times of extreme need or necessity. But actually, it, they're there all the time. It's just about allowing yourself to go there. So giving people that sense of it's okay on, on at any moment to step into your more courageous self, more bold self, more resilient self. You don't need to wait on the crisis to happen it the the these attributes are already there everybody on the planet is resilient everybody on the planet has courage has boldness and it's just about and and giving them the permission to step into that space so i don't give you courage Mm. you have it already built in i don't give you resilience or boldness you already have that in space and people talk about, oh, yeah, but resilience must um, – I used to be resilient as a child, but I'm not resilient now because I'm older now and I must have worn it out. You, you've got the same level of resilience when you arrived on the planet as when you leave. It's just that we don't see it in those terms. We don't, we're not aware of it because we don't tend to need it or use it or utilize it until some crisis happens. So I, I give them permission to step into those areas, no matter what's going on for them, when they want to, as opposed to when they feel they need to. Also, it's kind of that sort of, I don't know whether it's irony or, or what it is, but that idea that we don't have those things fully available regardless of age and circumstance seems like that's symptomatic or a function of the labels themselves very much so the, la- yeah. the labels will blind you it's like the label of, that relates to age for example because i'm of a certain age or i have so many kids or i have this situation at work then that dogmatic um mask means you you filter out the information or or it literally says as soon as I identify with that, that means that I don't have the energy, I don't have the courage. Um, I was talking in our in our training yesterday. Um, we got onto the topic of um, you know working in the industry of personal development as a coach. It can be tough at times, um, and there's I often hear from people there's this um, tussling between do I go and get the security of a job. Versus the you know the the entrepreneurial requirements of of running a business in the service industry, um, and I can see in in that whole thing it's like there there can be judgments like so there's this idea if I have if I get a secure job say in people that I've met who I'm training to be coaches, it's like oh but then I failed if I go get a job I'm like no <laughs> there isn't there is the, the, let's not limit ourselves there's they're very tight limited ideas that these labels can put in our minds and blind us to the positives and negatives the balanced nuanced consideration of how it fits with ourselves yeah, on yeah. what our choices in life are yeah there's, there's, there's almost like a um if i if i take this label back this job label i've failed at the entrepreneur label 
Yes. And, and there's this tussle in, in the mindset that says, this is good and this is bad. As opposed to, why don't you just let go of the label and just make, make the best choice that you need to make in the moment? And in doing so, you release all that stress, that angst, that worry, that concern, and just start living again. Whether you've got an, a, a job or you've, you've got your own business or you're retired or whatever set, set of circumstance you find yourself in, it's irrelevant. Don't hold on to the label for the sake of holding on to the label because you think it's going to give you something or it means something. It's, it's only going to keep you trapped and hidden or, or further away from that piece of you that you've been so desperately seeking in the first place. Mm. So why do people, because we can sit here and say, that, yeah, just let go of the label. I know that's not what you're saying, but it's like, but again, um, to give people some insight to, and I certainly have my views on it, it's like why people get so attached to their labels. What's the, yeah, why? Because again, people will often say, "Well, yeah, I know I've got a label, blah, 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 but I'm not getting rid of it." Almost like an addiction or something. So, yeah, what if you could give us an insight into that piece that that's that helps people understand that it's okay because that's what the trap we fall into to cling to our labels. What's going on there? So, so this is about the the you think the label is going to give is giving you something. Mm. or that it means something more than it actually is. Um, I used to think that the label on the, on the, the door of my office meant, some, meant I was really important, <laughs> meant I was better than somebody else, meant that I had uh, made it, shall we say. I, I had risen to a certain status in the institution, therefore I must be all, all, uh, the all-seeing, all-knowing individual no 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 i was just a human being that just happened to be okay at the job i did and therefore i got this label and it, and it, and it, it in holding on to the label it held me down in holding on to the label it it meant that i was keeping myself small and tight and almost like curled up in the ball and in holding on to the label, it you 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 think it's giving you something. You think it's um, it means that you're either better than something somebody else, or that it's going to change your world in some some way. It it means nothing. La labels are just a string of words, string of letters. It's it's the attachment that you have to the label. It's what you think it's going to give you, or that it does give you, or you, or that it, it it has a it has a stronger meaning than it actually does. Mm. Holding on to it is is the piece that you're not seeing. It's in the holding on to the label that you think it's giving you something, and it's giving you nothing other than grief, perhaps. Yeah, because the. I think one of the things that I think is very powerful to do is to help people understand the cost of those choices. There's this perceived benefit, um, which is usually has some kernel of merit to it. There's normally something in there that does. I mean, like having a nice job, there's, there's good benefits to that or having a position in somewhere. There's, there's you know, in, in the humanity of it, it's kind of nice, you know. Um, and yet in the clinging to it, normally there is a tremendous cost to it so i think it's useful to sort of understand what that cost is so if you were to sort of say what's the i mean i know there's so many labels different circumstances so i'm giving you a tough question here maureen <laughs> thanks <laughs> like yeah thanks joel <laughs> <laughs> um but it's like what do you see as kind of the the sort of the top costs of that
by holding on to particularly the let's take the job label as okay. as a as a, a starting point here. You can get so fixated on the on the job title uh, or the label of the job that you lose connection with the people that got you there in the first place. Mm. You lose connection with you can lose connection with family, friends, neighbors. You can lose connection with anybody that you had a had a connection with prior to that because you're thinking that you're more you're, you're far superior. But you can also get caught, so caught up in the label that you you lose sight of the things you used to enjoy because you're so fixated on the the, the job role and you get so in, so connected to, to the job that you lose sight of everything around you that you used to in, uh, or, or or things around you or activities around you that you used to love. Mm. I used to get home so tired and weary after uh i mean i would leave the house at seven twenty-five in the morning and i wouldn't get home until seven in the evening i was no fit state to to, to pick up my embroidery or my crochet or anything else that i might have loved to do previously so i i, I the, all of those things have, have been lost were, were lost the connection with having a a deep and meaningful conversation with my husband in the evening Forget that because I was so my brain was so heavy with work that I would all I just wanted to do was sit and vegetate for for a couple of hours because my brain was so heavy with the work. So you can you can lose connection with the nearest and dearest around you. You can lose connection with the stuff that you used to like to do, the the activities that you used to like to do. Um, there's lots of hidden costs to being attached to the label. Lots of hidden costs. Let's drill down. I think that's something that's very relatable and it, it works with the job title. I think people can recognize that loss of connection from with their family, their loved ones through a job, but also the, the other label that you mentioned about like mother. Mm -hmm. A lot of mothers, I feel they I hear them say they, they get tied up in the role of mother and they lose connection to their partners, even to the kids themselves and, and, yeah. and wider friends. So let's drill a bit down on the, the, the cost of that loss of connection. It's like, what's the, in, what's the internal impact on a person who maybe is just by listening to this, recognizing that they're maybe lost into a label and through this can go, I recognize, yeah, I lose connection with the people I love. Let's take, let's help them understand what that really does inside yourself it's almost like you're shutting down part of your your you're something like you're compartmentalizing your heart mm. because you're shut, you're shutting down the bits of you that 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 would ordinarily have connected outwards to other people around you let me tell you a quick story i i my my husband and i we used to be in the in the uh, the, the army and we'd gone to a, a, a what they call a ladies' guest dinner night. So it's long frocks, fancy do, all the all the you know that 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 entails. And I was I, I it was my first time at this particular uh, serge, officers and sergeants mess. And this lady came up to me and she started a conversation, and she says, um, "Oh, I've got five children," and her whole persona was. And I'm important because I have five children. I'm important because I've, I've brought new beings into the world. I'm really important because this means a lot to me. And she turned around and she goes, so how, do you have any children? I says, no. You'll be, but you're having some, right? I says, no. She flipped on a flip, flip around 180 degrees and walked away from me. I was no longer worth speaking to. I was no longer a human being in her mind because I didn't meet her her label of being a mother. It, it was so all-encompassing for her. So it, it, it was like her whole reason for being was having children. And therefore, to meet somebody who said they didn't even want children was not in her remit 
it didn't compute in her brain, she could no longer carry on a conversation with me and she walked away. Now, for me, that was the epitome of being so embroiled, so connected, so um, bogged down in the label, thinking it meant something so important to her that she couldn't have a conversation with somebody who didn't meet her, her status in the world. And her status in the world was mother. Her status in the world was her five children. And that for me was deeply, I, I, I thought, oh, first I was a bit shocked. But then I thought, how sad. How very sad that this lady can't see another person's point of view. How very sad that this lady is so connected to being a mother that she can't see anything else around it. It was the it was her it was the only thing that she could recognise as being uh, an okay thing for a woman to do. Mm. Um, it was it was quite an interesting evening, shall we say? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I can see that if you take that well, literally, but even metaphorically, or, or you extrapolate it into mm. the mechanism that works, because it's like literally turning away. From opportunities because the label limits you and so in that loss of connection so we go back to loss of connection from your family and your mm. loved ones reducing the size of your world if, when i when i go to that space and i think about my experiences of that and experiences of clients um i think what i see a lot is there's there's a that's where this hollowing out begins where if you re if you reduce your world to the set number of labels um and for some people it can be like like that woman you're you're speaking of it's like it, it can override so much like come down to like one mother um that's it and then the rest the rest of the fullness of you the different expressions the different things that happen sort of get eroded away so then like even if then you wish to reconnect say to your your partner it becomes harder because it's like as you said you've lost yourself it's sort of it's buried yeah. or it's just it's just gone is that is that what you come across it, it's it's certainly part of the experience that i I've, I've had with with certain clients that in the in their determination to hold on to the label or mm. labels that they even when they want to let them go it's it's a it feels like they're, they're having to climb mount everest every single time and yet in letting go of a label it's just a thought you acquired a label through thinking you can let it go through new thinking it's allowing new thinking to come through in the moment. Well, that's that's where I mean that's a really good point because to say it's easy to do it can be very tricky for someone, especially on their own. That's why, again, both of us we you know we do coaching work and we believe in the power of help. And it's like, I love the idea of it's like climbing Mount Everest every time. You don't go as a total newbie and go, oh, I'd like to get to the top of the mountain. I think I'll just head off up Mount Everest. You, you get training, you get help, you get, you know, a Sherpa that will show you the way, right? Sure. Um, which is exactly what you do with people in this mm. position. You, you help them learn, practice and do the thing that is really that really matters to them once they realize that's the case. Um, and I know you're doing this, um, like you say, you, you, you've worked, you've done this work, but you, you're kind of doing this new venture of the VIP month. Tell, yeah, us, so, tell us how that works. So, so people may have come across the, the, the concept of a VIP day, which is where you would spend a whole day with a, a coach or, or, or a support um, person of, of whatever flavor. Um, but one, one day doesn't cut it, really. So what I've done is I've split a day into two. You do three hours at the beginning of, of the month, 
three hours at the end and in the middle you have two maybe three 90 minute coaching sessions but then you've also got access to me via whatsapp throughout the whole month and it's about taking it a, a little bit slower rather than just having to cram everything into a, a, a one day experience so it's, it's about giving people that experience over a longer space of time so that they can unravel and pick and drop the labels that they, they no longer wish to have. And it could be that after, even after the month, they wish to continue working with me. And, and that's, that's often the case, but it's almost like it, it's a, it's a set up space where, where people can get the experience of coming to terms with the labels that they've acquired over the years and I, I, giving them the, the space to let them go. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to know. So, so it's no, like, no I, I, can, um, I can feel that. I think that's a, a brilliant idea because I, I find this too. It's sometimes um, it can be good to have an intensive start, like an induction or, a, um, or like a boot camp where, where you – that first bit the the intense focus can be that point where you shift from denial fear um you know oh my god what the hell am i doing but with that intensive time with you and, and i love that unpack it to a month you've got to top and tail with the two intensive times and then support throughout that gives it the, the oh god well and then <laughs> and then all right and then from there I imagine you cover a lot of ground in that time, but also it means now you're set up for like now, how deep do I want to go? And the recognition of, of how the, how beneficial continuing this journey would be. So I love that, that you're doing that. Um, so how, what's the best way for people? I've, I've loved this conversation. I think there's some really good stuff, and I'm I'm hoping that that um, it's helped people get an aha moment of of how we can be very blind to this. And also, we've looked at a lot of the pain around it. Mm. That there's real hope here, and certainly um, working with you would be a, a really great way to um, to do that. But how? What's the best way for people to sort of approach you? Um. The, probably the two best ways you can either send me an email to maureen at maureenyork.com or you can get hold of me via facebook uh facebook messenger um and i'm, I'm pretty swift at responding so i either of those two ways are tend to be the the, the fastest ways to get hold of me so on, on facebook it's going to be your profile i imagine or is it your yeah you can yeah you can either go into my profile or, or onto my business page yeah um, and also, if they want to find out more about your VIP month, um, there's a URL, which is VIPmonthwithmaureen.com, which I will put in the show notes um, so people can go and check that out, which I recommend you do. Um, it's I love on that page, you described it as a love letter. <laughs> And I, th I think it's a, anyone who's thinking, is this me? It would be great for them to go and read that. I think it really speaks to the, the heart of what we've been speaking about. Yeah. And it, it's about giving yourself um, some personal time, mm. loving yourself enough to explore this a little bit deeper. Yeah. And on, and on that webpage, they can get in touch with you, schedule a call. They, they, they can. It, it links straight to my online calendar and they can book a convenient time that, that works for them. So is that like just a, a, like a free chat kind of thing? How does that work? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I've got maybe three or four kind of questions that I kind of um, help them. It helps them uncover or elicit or, or, or point them towards whether they might be stuck or or caught out by the label kind of situation um but there's no there's no um what's the word i want to use uh there's nothing there's no there's no hidden agenda behind these calls if you if after the call you'd like to explore things further then great and if after the call you think 
No, I'm done now. Thank you very much, Maureen. That's cool too. Um, there's no kind of forcing or, well, now that you've signed up for this call, then you must do X, Y, or Z. <laughs> no, none of that. I think that uh, is, uh, that is a, I have the same with, you know, because I have like a, you know, I call it a clarity call. It's, it's really a find out, do we fit? Is this going to work for you? How can I exactly. help? Exactly. Um, so, uh, any, any coaching arrangement, any, any of these arrangements are a, are a two way street. Mm. It's, a mu- as, it's as much about me finding out more about you as well as you finding more about me. And we'll either, you'll either think that we gel. I, I, I may think that we don't gel or that we do gel and vice versa. And, and it's about, it, you may not be ready just yet. But it's about exploring, just taking that first step into considering how best, what help do you, would you like and how best would you like to receive it? Mm, nice. Yeah. So if you had like one final pearl of wisdom for the listeners of Be a Brilliant Human. <laughs> um, it, it, it's... It, it, it's a, a, a phrase I, that is used often in the world that I live in, in my coaching world, and it's nothing broken, nothing to fix. Mm. It's just about pointing you in the right direction. Nice. Thanks so much for being here, Maureen. It's been a wonderful No worries. It has been a pleasure. A complete, a complete pleasure, Joel. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening. If you've enjoyed this show, I'd love you to do me a solid and tell someone about it. They can find us on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, and most other podcast platforms. Plus, if you visit the website, www.babrillianhuman.com, you can share the show notes to social media and make my day. Also, make sure you hit that follow button. And if you haven't yet downloaded the MPA process sheet, head on over to joelyoungmpa.com and get your free copy today. Big love and see you next time.